Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta. And before we get started on tonight's story, I'm just going to let you know about one quick thing. This coming up weekend, July 8th through July 10th, I will be in South Jersey or the Philadelphia area at ECGX. That's the East Coast Gaming Expo. I'll be there telling scary stories along with my good friend, Comic Drake. Check the link in the description for more information and come on by to see me. And now, on to tonight's story. I know I'm not the only one that's had this happen to him. I can't be. I'm sure at least some of you know what I'm talking about. That moment that they hit and you realize something's off. The moment you realize it's not just a bad trip. It's a... It's what you took has gone bad. You know, like... It's expired antibiotics or Tylenol. For most of my adult life, I did little more than smoke weed. With the occasional evening where I could find some sort of hallucinogen... You know, acid was my preference, but I wouldn't shy away from some mushrooms if they were easier to find. Three months ago, I felt the urge to have another spiritually lifted night, as I tend to call it. So I call up the guy I usually talk to when acquiring my vision quest materials, and he told me something strange. Hey, Bert, I don't work tomorrow, so I thought I'd make it my night a little special. You have, uh, you have anything available? Bert's voice traveled through the phone in an unusually somber tone. Yeah, I got something for you, but... But what? Some people have been hitting me up saying there's something weird about this batch. Oh yeah? Weird how? They don't say. They don't seem to like it from how they're acting, so... So I don't know. Maybe it's a strong batch and... They just don't like the intensity? Like I said, it... Um, it's just a guess, though. I sat there on the phone, letting an awkward silence hang in the air for a few minutes as I thought it over. I didn't work the next day, and it had been a few months since I had anything more than some good bud, but it was really my only option when it came to drugs anyway. When you're younger, it's a lot easier to find people with the drugs that you're looking for. However, as you get older, everyone just assumes you're a cop. Nobody will sell you anything. Bert cleared his throat on the other end of the line, pulling me out of my head and hinting at me to continue the conversation. Uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, uh, I'll take my usual three. I'll head out and I'll make my way over to pick them up for me in a minute. Okay, but just realize that I did warn you about this batch. Yeah, I get it. Don't worry. Warning received. Your hands are clean. With that final statement, I hung up and I began to gather my things to head out to my car. Something about the situation... Maybe it was something that Bert had said about the batch had burrowed into the back of my mind. The little mind leech of an uncomfortable feeling wouldn't let go when it made the drive over to Bert's house filled with suspicion. On the one hand, this wasn't the first time I had accepted acid that he said others had thought was too strong. Those times had proved to be just what I was looking for to propel me into a night of speaking with other dimensional beings and flying amongst the stars with a heavy trip. Yet on the other hand, that little brain slug of doubt in the back of my mind wouldn't allow my nerves to settle. When I finally reached Bert's house, my excitement for a good night had managed to overcome the strange feeling I received from our other conversation. Bert and I had been friends for years and years at that point. The two of us had gone to the same high school, remained relatively close after graduation. He only sold weed back in high school, but since grown his cloak and dagger business into providing various hallucinogenics. He typically had either shrooms or acid, or sometimes both. Occasionally, he would have ecstasy. But that was rare, and I often had no interest in that. He once had peyote. It was only that one time, but damn, was that really intense endeavor. As I walked into his home, he sat at the table, separating out little paper tabs. His performing this task was in no way odd to me. I had seen him do it hundreds of times. The part that I found unusual about this particular instance was that he was wearing gloves. He never wore gloves for this, often microdosing himself as he separated out hits. So in a way, it was a little added bonus for him besides the money. Uh, hey, what's with the gloves, dude? I asked, not being able to rein in my curiosity. It's just, uh, like a precaution. I told you, man, there's something strange about these sheep. I mean, just look at it. 
I looked at the small square of paper with a grid of perforations, creating a 10 by 10 sheet of 100 total hits. I immediately knew what he was talking about. Instead of a transparent liquid dripped over a clean white sheet of blotted paper, it was... orange. I don't mean there was a slight yellowing as if the mixture was potent or anything. I mean that it was nearly neon orange and somewhat streaked. Whoa, dude, is that normal? Did you get this from a different guy or something? No, I got it from the same guy, but... I sat back staring at him for what felt like an eternity, just waiting for him to finish his sentence. When it never came, I tried coaxing the rest of what he was saying out of him. But what? Bro, you can't just stop mid-sentence like that and leave me hanging. He seemed to snap out of his impromptu trance, gathering three little tabs that held them out to me before speaking. But he was acting strange and I picked this up from him. Oh yeah? I said as I held out my hand, letting him drop the three hits in my palm. Strange how? I don't really know how to describe it. It was like he had a secret or maybe just a little over paranoid. Come to think of it, his pupils seemed dilated, so he may have been tripping when I got them. Now that I think about that possibility, it doesn't seem strange. Well, oh, shit, man. If he was tripping, then of course. He's going to be acting a little strange. I don't think that I would really read into it too much. With that, I paid him and began to walk out the door to my car. When I reached the door, I realized that the three hits were just sitting in my palm. I had no bag or container to place them in for the trip home. I stood at the door, contemplating how to solve this seemingly minuscule problem. Apparently, I had stood staring back and forth from my hand to the doorknob for much longer than I realized, and Bert called out to me. Hey, Jim, you cool, man? You've been standing there trying to figure out my door for like five minutes now. You just turn the handle, you walk through it. It's not that complicated. A strange... Tingling wave started from my skull and flowed through the rest of my body twice before I could make my mouth respond. Yeah, yeah, I'm good, I said, as I glanced back at him and then to the tabs in my hand. I smiled to myself as I shook off the last remnants of the strange tingling sensation and tossed all three of the little paper tabs into my mouth, then setting them beneath my tongue to let the acid soak into the veins. I turned the handle and I opened the door. I gave Bert a quick wave goodbye as I stepped through. I saw the utterly shocked look on his face as I closed the door behind me. No doubt his reaction to seeing me take all three hits at once, before I even got home. I knew that acid takes typically about 20 minutes to kick in, and my drive home was only 10 minutes, so I'd still have a good 10 or more minutes before it hit to get ready and settle for the wild night that I was about to have. However, I began to get scared on the way home as I began to feel my breathing pattern change more waves of shivers and tingles wash over my body. Holy shit. This must be some good stuff, I thought to myself as I parked my car and walked up to my front door. Suddenly I could no longer feel the tabs under my tongue as I reached for the door handle. I saw them sitting in the palm of my hand. I froze. And stared, focusing on the three tiny squares of paper resting gently in my palm. What the fuck? I said as my heart began to race. I brought my hand to my mouth and put the tabs under my tongue, but just as I moved, they disappeared and I could once again feel them soaking in my saliva. The chill ran up my spine and I began to shake back and forth like a dog trying to dry its fur. I stopped suddenly, realizing that I was performing this strange dance still standing out in the open on my front steps. Get inside, get inside, get inside, get inside, get inside, get inside, get inside. A strange whisper echoed just behind my ear, and I spun around to see who had made it. The view before me blurred, and the street began to form waves like they were made of liquid. The cars passing melted into little more than colorful blobs, rolled for a few feet, and then exploded into various generic vehicle shapes. I closed my eyes and rubbed my eyelids, trying to reset my vision. I shouldn't have hit so soon. Something's wrong. It's wrong. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Another whisper sounded just behind my ear, causing me to spin around again. I became genuinely terrified at the thought. I had bitten off more than I could chew with this. My heart raced, and I, I quickly opened the front door and burst through into my kitchen. I stumbled to the floor, and I kicked the door shut behind me. 
Hey Jim, are you cool, man? I've been standing there trying to figure out my door for like five minutes now. You just turn the handle and you walk through it. It's not that complicated. Yeah, I'm fine. Wait, what? What? How did you get to my... The voice trailed off as my kitchen came back into view. I shook my head as another chill surged through my body. This shirt's getting too hot, I said, as I began to pull it off over my head. This is going to be bad quickly. I need something to calm me down. My heart pounded within the prison of my ribcage, and I nearly began to cry with fear as I realized... This is going to be a bad trip. The voice came from the Alexa speaker on the wall, but it sounded like it was slowed down and way too deep. And I, I gripped at my chest and I tried to slow my heart and felt my shirt. The shirt's getting too hot, I said as I began to take it off. I stopped halfway as the thought of already doing it flashed through my mind. This is going to be a bad trip. The warped robotic voice of Alexa came through the speaker again. Shut up! I mean, how would you know? I yelled out. As soon as the words left my mouth, the room felt deathly silent. Another chill screamed through my body as I reached up and I grasped the counter and then finally pulling myself to my feet. I need something to calm me down. I thought again. Alexa, play calm music. I'm sorry. I didn't understand that, you little bitch. Please try again. Wait, wait, did she just say that? I tried to remember as I stumbled over the sink and I, I decided I couldn't waste time getting a glass and I turned the faucet on to drink from directly. The water blasted me in the face as if it was a, from a fire hose set to set a maximum pressure. I felt myself nearly drown. Stumbling back onto the floor, I, I turned to ask Kevin what was happening. How should I know? I'm only 14, remember? Wait, Kevin? How are you here? You died when we were kids. How should I know? I'm only 14, remember? Wait, Kevin? Kevin, how are you here? You died when we were kids. I was there when you got hit by that drunk driver. <laughs> Kevin just laughed, but it... It didn't sound right. It sounded guttural and glitchy. I watched as my childhood best friend flickered between normality and entirely brutalized. Just as he had looked after being hit by a speeding vehicle. You know, you, you could have saved my life. Life. No, it wasn't my fault. It was... I was interrupted by the speaker again. I don't think I can help you with that, you pathetic junkie. Shut up! Damn it, just shut up, Alexa! I screamed as another jolt of tingles surged through my body. Alexa, play calming music, you stupid bitch! You could have saved me, Jimmy. His voice had changed again to a little more than an echoed whisper, oscillating back and forth in my mind. No, I couldn't have Kevin. You, you aren't really there. You died 15 years ago. A blast of death metal at maximum volume filled the room from the speaker. I quickly covered my ears as Archspire growled and screamed their lyrics. Do you like that, you little, little bitch? What the fuck is happening? Alexa, stop! Suddenly, the room felt deathly quiet, and I decided to make my way to the couch in the living room to lay down and relax. Maybe... Maybe I could turn on some music visuals on the television to try and redirect this trip. I, I called out for Alexa to turn on the TV as I crawled my way into the room, and instantly, a pain crashed into my stomach, and I puked all over the floor. I couldn't help but scream in terror as I knew that vomiting the tablets back up would cause them to reactivate, so to speak, which would intensify my already out-of-control vision quest. Hey Jim, you cool man? You've been standing there trying to figure out my door for like five minutes now. Handles, yes, I know, Bert. I, I can make... I stopped realizing I was still in Bert's house. Wait, no, I, I wasn't. Wasn't I? Where was I? My couch, that's right. Sir? Who were you talking to? I was talking to... Wait, who are you? How did you get in my... This is my house, right? As I looked at the person, their face melted down to the bone and reformed into my mother's. A look of knowing disappointment across her face just as I began to speak. The entire person liquefied, pouring onto the floor, then... Reformed into my dog from when I was a child and burst into flames. Is this hot enough for you in here? 
a bellowing voice said, bouncing back and forth between my ears. Somehow I knew it was coming from my long dead dog as it continued to burn and heat the room. Yeah, this shirt's getting too hot. I, I need to take it off, I responded. The dog blew away as mere ashes, and then, as the last ash floated off in the wind, I heard three loud, deep barks. The same barks that I remembered from my dog. I scooted myself over, leaning against the tree so I could look out over the field. Wait, wait, no, no, no. There, there was no tree here. I was in my living room, right? I'm sorry. I didn't understand that. Please try again. Alexa's voice rang out, but sounded as though someone kept changing the recording speed as she spoke. Hey, Jim. You cool, man? I'm sorry. I didn't understand that. Hey, Jim. You alright? Oh, shit. I have to get this under control. What, what if I take a shower? That usually calms me down. The thought of the thought barely formed as they pushed through my screaming and crowded brain. Another shock and wave of chills pulsed through my body as I stumbled my way through the bathroom. I made the mistake of looking into the mirror above the sink. I began to scream with terror as I watched the skin over my face begin to melt and drip into the sink, only for the vision to stutter and start over with my skin still intact. I reeled back, falling into the bathtub that was already filled, for some reason, with cold water. Uh, I'm calling the cops, you pathetic junkie. I heard Alexa say. Hey Jim, you cool man? I've been standing there trying to figure out my door for like five minutes now. You just turn the handle and walk through it. It's not that complicated. Sir, you can't be in there, said my brother as if he was speaking in slow motion. Wait, wait, what are you doing here? I said just before the water splashed over my face. I fell deeper into the bathtub than I should have been. I fell impossibly deep sinking down as if there was no bottom. I screamed, but no bubbles formed in front of my face. Instead, colorful and intricate balloon animals were expelling from my throat. I tried to stand and effortlessly rose to my feet. Cool water splashed in my face, another shock and chills flooded my body. The world around me suddenly went black. I awoke to a white room. Still breathing. Warping around me. My head swimming, I looked around, realizing that I was strapped down to the bed, surrounded by sterile white and various strange machines. My mind began to race with confusion and fear. First, a giant weasel burst through the door, morphing into a horse and finally into a human-shaped pile of worms, wearing a police uniform. Well, why am I here? What are you going to do to me? I called out with a tremble in my voice. Son, the pile of worms began to speak out in English. I'm not going to ask you what drugs you've taken, because at this point, it doesn't matter. Do you have any idea what happened over the past 24 hours? The room took a deep breath and expanded out nearly twice its original size, then, then shrank back down to the point where I thought that it would crush both the worm cop that had changed into a lizard wearing a uniform and me. N nothing. I, I went home for the normal night. I, I fell asleep in the shower, so how did I end up here? struggled through my words to make my voice sound calm and normal. He didn't know I had taken anything, did he? I mean, how did any of this get out just being in my house? I knew I should have stayed away from that acid after seeing it. It looked so unusual. It's way past time. Should have worn off. What if it messed me up and never goes away? What if I'm like this forever, just doomed to perpetually trip for the rest of my life, never able to truly function again? My horrified train of thought was interrupted by Officer Lizard speaking again. You were found in a public fountain drowned. They had to shock you multiple times to get your heart started. And you kept screaming about a dead dog, telling someone named Alexa to shut the fuck up. Lizard cop paused for a second, stared at me, apparently waiting for his words to sink into my intoxicated mind. Now do you want to try again and tell me what happened? Because that clearly was not a normal night at home. Hey, Jim. You cool, man? You've been standing there trying to figure out my door for like five minutes now. You just turn the handle and walk through it. It's not that complicated. I'm sorry. I didn't understand that. Instead of answering as the voice echoed in my mind, I turned my head and I closed my eyes. I can't still discern reality from the constantly fluctuating world of this never-ending trip. I can't leave this room. They won't let me. They don't trust me. But honestly, 
Ever since I took those three little tabs. Neither do I. Hey there, kids, it's me, Mr. PewDiePasta, and I wanted to tell you thank you so much for watching today's video or listening to tonight's episode of the podcast. For those of you guys that exclusively listen on the podcast, I got some news for you. Um, I can only have, a, uh, I think, 300 episodes or 250 episodes out, depending on where you listen, of any of the stories or series or whatever you happen to be interested in hearing on the podcast. And if you guys are seeing that your favorite episodes or your favorite stories have fallen off the back end, uh, I can't control that, unfortunately. But what I can do is tell you about YouTube, youtube.com slash Pasta. You can find every single story that I've ever done. So if you're used to seeing something that only has 300 episodes, let me tell you about a place you can go to that has 3,000. <laughs> And as always, I want to give a huge thank you uh, to everybody who's out there on the Patreon, patreon.com slash MrCreepyPasta. So a big thank you to Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Stephanie Butler, Reaper61167, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, Adam Morris, Grand Moth the Milky, Big Smoke369, Michael McIver, Captain Scurvy, Salty Irish Poet, Esteban, Braden Morris, Nate Cole, Horror Fan1212, Our Insect Time, Kyle Resnack, David Martin, Scarrington the Unkempt, Robert Malcolm, Angelus, Spanky, Snoochie Boochies, Seclude, Lupita Galvin, That Creepy Chick, Tyler Fletcher, Merxinum, Red Shadow Cat, Xavier the Cheyenne, Demix, Sean Cato Baker, Six Gay Rats in a Trench Coat, Turtle Man, Rob, the Rob Like Sharp Things, Chaos Arts, Cryolinian, Xavier Graphius, Lord Life's Best, Goreng Trimagasi, Maria Walker, Emily Mitchell, Crazy Kid, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Ike Limchok, Dirt Diver 030, Matt Bach, Voice of Sand, Coffee Zombie, Hidden Tiger, Shelly J, Jeremy H, Psychomel, Nana, Deleted Account, Melted Lake, Tully Sue, William King, David Miver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Bardo Hawks 764, Lambda M98, Harley, Sashi Suzaku, Cronut 509, Kaylee Ambrose, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Azarine Fox, Freddy Krueger, Happy Birthday Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Benjamin Welvert, Here with the Sloth, Fester's Lampshade, Sky Harbor, Nico Kyle, Raphael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Paulson, and Corey Kenshin. My goodness, the list is getting long. <gasps> but hey, I appreciate all of you. And to everybody who watches and subs and likes and leaves comments and does all those things, sweet dreams.